Um, so Revelation 20:15 again anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 21:8 says, "But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the sexually immoral, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death." And you may be thinking, "Well, I've done some of those things." I, I'm guilty of some of those things. So don't I belong there? Well, yeah, yeah, actually you do. You belong in the lake of fire. But if you've accepted Jesus, then His work supersedes your work. What He did for you cancels out what you did. And in the end, for those of us who choose Jesus, in the end, forever and ever, our future, our, our gifts, the things we enjoy, the things that we experience are based on what He did, not what we did. Isn't that incredible? As long as we accept Him, then our future is determined by what Jesus did, not what we did. You know, I have a series. I can't wait to get to it. I'm going to call it Jesus Our Substitute, and then I'm going to follow it up with the greatest story ever told. And, and, and I, it's just, I love to just dwell on those truths because it changes you. Jesus is so amazing that just thinking about Him changes your life. Just being in His presence changes your life. But, but, but I, I've, I came to this conclusion, and it's not overhyping it, and that is this. He's the greatest hero who ever lived. He accomplished the greatest feat in human history, and He's revealed in the greatest story ever told. And that is absolutely not overhyped. You can't overhype Jesus. You can overhype probably everything else under the sun, but we can't over-exaggerate the importance of Jesus Christ. He is the substitute. He made it possible for us to escape the wrath of God, the judgment of God, and spend eternity uh, being blessed and loved by God. Man, what, what could be any better than that? So, um, the second death, Vine's uh, Expository Dictionary says, death is the opposite of life. It never denotes non-existence. So, the second death, being cast into the lake of fire, is not being annihilated or ceasing to exist. Uh, spiritual life is conscious existence in, the com in communion with God. So, so, you can say life is living with God forever, Death is conscious existence in separation from God. There, there's, evidently, there's just no way to destroy someone once they're born. That We are eternal beings. That's why my, my book says, you know, are you ready for eternity? You're an eternal being. Now, we haven't existed forever, but we will now. Now that we've been given life, we will live forever, and there's no way to, to, to stop that. The question is, where are you going to live forever? Are you going to live in the presence of God or not? And so here's another quote. There will be people who will go to hell. And uh, in the end, you will agree with God. Once everyone has found their eternal fate, we will agree that, God, you did the right thing. You did all you could do. You were just and merciful. You were compassionate and holy. You are the perfect, righteous judge. And, uh, and you won't, of course, you won't regret your decision. Uh, John 3.18 says, He who believes in me is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he's not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You know, John Osteen used to say this all the time. He would say, it, it would be a shame for you as, a, as an American or wherever you're watching, a, 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 a modern-day citizen of the world, to die and go to hell. For all the things that we know and all the information at our, our, our disposal, there's no reason that anyone should die and go to hell. The, the, only, the, the only thing that matters, what makes the difference, it's not sin, it's not sinners, it's not failures, it's not addictions. Here it is. He who believes in Jesus is not condemned. That's the, the dividing line. But he who does not believe is condemned already 
And that's why you know, we've got to get the message out because I guarantee you 90% of sinners, I don't have, this isn't an accurate study, but I'm telling you, you talk to people who don't know God, non-believers, nearly every non-believer you talk to, when they begin to talk about eternity, if they have any notion of God at all, begin to talk about their works. They, they, they have this works mentality and how would they not? I mean, everything we do is based on achievement in this world. But it's just not true when it comes to heaven and hell and life after death. It's not about works. There's, no one goes to hell because of their sins. Here's, what, here's the dividing line. This is John 3.18. He who believes in me is not condemned. Period. So, so the question is not what did you do? What did you not do? What are you guilty of? What did you think? What did you say? Was that good or was that bad? That's not the question. The question is, do you believe in Him? Man, that simplifies things, doesn't it? I know we've got things that we did right and wrong and all that, but that's not the question. The question is, do you believe in Him? If you do, you're not condemned. Period. Actually, comma. But period, you're not condemned. Then it says, but he who does not believe, so you don't believe, no, I don't, I, I don't believe. I'm not a believer. I'm not, I don't go to church.